Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna talk about the door transition or the window transition or any kind of opening transition. Essentially, you start in one position at door one and after you play the clip, you end up in a different location. Essentially using the door or window or opening as a way to transition to the next scene in your gameplay. I'm gonna show off three different ways to do this edit, starting from the quickest and ending with the best looking. You can go ahead and choose whichever one works best for you, and I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever one you wanna to go to. The first step in this process, regardless of which method you choose, is to find a door. I've got an example clip here from Modern Warfare 2. You can see that my character right here begins to run through a door. So the first way to do this transition is what we're gonna call the match cut. All right, so I'm gonna scroll forward on our timeline until our character model is just about to go through the door. Right about there is pretty good. And I'm gonna hit my cut button, which I've mapped to A, but you can go ahead and use your razor blade tool as well if that's what you're comfortable with. But I'm gonna hit A to cut. I'm gonna scroll forward in the clip until my character is about to do the same thing at a time ahead. It looks like there's a door up here. Do I run through it? Looks like it. So I'm gonna scroll forward again until on this second door, I am matching the frame, which is here. So if I jump back to the first cut and I jump to the second cut, you can see that the frame is pretty similar. So now if I ripple delete this section, and if I play this clip forward, what should happen is the character is gonna run through the door and instead of appearing inside the building, he's gonna run outside. So this is called the match cut and this works for really any clip. You could use this with a reload sequence or anything that has a similar animation. And it's an editing technique that gets used often even through IRL footage. Now the match cut is the easiest transition, but what happens if you don't have another door that you're running through? Oftentimes in your gameplay, you might run out of a doorway, but then you're in an open field for a while and you don't have another door that you can cut to. That'll take us to the second way we can make this transition, and that's by keyframing our crop, or we can call it crop cutting or whatever you wanna call it. But essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our crop properties and keyframe them to animate this transition. All right, so I'm gonna scroll forward again till we're at a similar point to right before the door is gonna open, which is gonna be right here. You can either hit the marker icon here or tap M to place a marker on that clip. All right, now let's find a point where we're running out in the open, somewhere right around here. This is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. So now we have our marker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll forward in the clip until the door audio no longer plays. Audio is one of the most important things when it comes to editing. And when you lose that sound of the door opening, the transition begins to lose its believability. So you wanna make sure you include that sound wave. There, doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it again. And then I'm gonna ripple delete this middle section here. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do our crop transition. I'm gonna bring up the footage we'd like to cut to and drag it over to land on the marker that we created earlier. So if I disable this track, you can see that we're at the door. I'm gonna go over to the inspector tab for our crop properties and I'm gonna keyframe on the crop left and the crop right. If you're not familiar with keyframing, all it indicates to DaVinci Resolve is that you're going to change that property over time. I have my crop left and crop right keyframed and I'm gonna slide each of these over so that it's halfway onto the screen. Our timeline is 1920, so I can enter in 960, a little quick math for the crop left and 960 for the crop right. Now what we've done is we've completely cropped it to the left and right so that nothing is showing. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to move a frame forward by hitting right on my keyboard. So you see that we have this gap that's being formed. If I decrease my prop left to fill in that space, you can see that it begins to look like we're running out into the open. Now, if I go back a frame to where we started and forward, I think you guys can see where this is going. So now I'm going to go one more frame forward. And again, decrease the crop left, decrease the crop right. And if I begin to play this, you can see that we're beginning to animate this opening. You don't have to do it one frame at a time. So for instance, I can jump forward two frames and then drag this down to zero, drag this down to zero. And if I go back a couple frames, you can see that it tried to interpolate that distance. It got pretty close to matching it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick correction here quick correction here. It looks like we have a proper animation. So when we play this all the way through, it looks something like this. 
Now this transition works really well when the door that you're running through occupies the full height of the frame, but you can begin running into issues when the opening you're going through doesn't take up the full screen and the sides aren't perfectly 90 degrees. So you can't just move in left, right, top, bottom. So this is where the last version comes into play. And this is the one I use the most often because even though it takes a little more time, it ends up looking the best. This version utilizes masking. In essence, masking removes a part of the image so that you can display what's underneath it. So I have a clip here where my character turns and there is a door opening. And you can see that the door opening isn't perfectly up and down. The floor isn't flush with the bottom of our frame. And you'll also notice that the door is already open. So when we turn into it, we could try to crop our next clip on top of it, but it would be pretty difficult to do so. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll forward until our characters run through the opening and it doesn't have to be exact. Right there is good. Go ahead and delete this section. And then I'm going to bring in the clip that I'm going to cut to, which is right here. And again, this is us running outside. I'm gonna drag this underneath. Now you can do the masking either in the fusion page or the color page. I'm more familiar with the color page, so that's what we're gonna use. If you have never used the color page, it will probably seem a little overwhelming. Do your best to not be intimidated because what we're doing is pretty straightforward. You just need to know where to click. So when I go to the color page, and I play this playhead scrubber, we just have our cut clip selected. There are two key steps. Make sure every time you do this transition, you check these off first, because otherwise you're gonna have to redo it. Step one and arguably the most important step, make sure you're doing this before you do this transition. Go to your keyframes tab. It's this icon over here on the right, the fading diamond type of icon. Click on that. If your layout doesn't look like mine, you might have your primary and secondary views combined. If that's the case, go over to this icon here, click it. This should separate your views again. But make sure you find this keyframes tab. And all we're gonna do is click on the keyframe for our corrector one. Again, all this keyframe is gonna do is indicate that we're applying a change that's gonna change over time. So that was step one, most important step. Make sure your corrector one keyframe is on. Step two, right click, add alpha output. The alpha output is basically the transparency of the clip. This is gonna allow us to remove parts of our media to display what's underneath. Once you've added your alpha output, go ahead and drag the blue corrector one node, your alpha output node, and then we can begin the masking process. To do that, go to your window tab, window, 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 window tab, window tab. This should give you some options for drawing shapes on your screen. So if I wanted to, I could click this rectangular icon here to add a rectangular shape to our clip. And the area inside of our rectangle is being displayed, but everything outside of it is being hidden and we're showing the clip underneath. But when I drag this around, you can see that we're isolating and hiding certain parts of our media. So hopefully you can see what we're about to do. So I'm gonna click off of our square to get rid of that. And the one I'm looking for is the pen tool down here. Click that on. This is gonna allow us to draw custom shapes. I'm gonna use my right arrow key to tab forward until I have an opening in the door, which is right there. You can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, and if you click the mouse wheel, it will pan left, right, up, and down. And I'm going to zoom in on the door opening and begin to draw this shape. Perfect. Well, kind of. It's inverted. To fix that, go over to the circle inside the square, Invert that. All we need to do now, and this is where it becomes a time consuming process, is trace our door opening to the end of the clip. So depending on how long you're running through that opening or how long the clip is or how much it moves, this can become a very time consuming process. But if you do it correctly, the end result looks really, really, really good. So oftentimes it's worth it to take the extra couple minutes to mask this out. And honestly, once you do it once, the process really becomes a lot easier to do. Couple quick tips with the nodes. You can use your mouse wheel and center click to remove a node that was center click. You can see when I add a new node, uh, there's a spline to it. If you want to straighten that, double click. And if you want to re-add the spline, hold the control key down and you can read add your curve. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go frame by frame and begin to mask over our door open. And if I do it correctly at the end, we'll have a perfect lineup of our character running through the door. Now you don't have to use this effect for anything that's overly complicated either. Even for just a simple door edit, 
I can take this door opening right here, find a section further down, and apply the same principles. Check on our keyframe corrector, add an alpha output, and begin to keyframe our opening. And the edit itself is going to look cleaner and more natural because the opening is cleaner and more natural. No matter what version you end up going with, a couple of quick tips to make sure this transition feels and sounds the best. One, like I mentioned earlier, include the door audio. When you don't include the audio or you cut off the audio early, when you're watching it back, it just doesn't feel right. And in that same vein, you can lead in with the audio from the next clip. So for instance, in this door transition we have here, I can even lead in and fade in our audio so that it doesn't feel as abrupt. And as you guys saw in that last version of the edit, anytime you can find frames that are really similar, it'll help blend that transition so that it seems natural. And a lot of times your viewers won't catch it. Hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them in the comments down below.